So, we're all familiar with kangaroos, and we're mostly familiar with wallabies, but have you guys heard of a wallaroo? That's what we're talking about today, guys. What is a wallaroo? So stick around, guys. It should be a pretty interesting video. G'day, g'day. Sneaker and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And like I said, today we're hanging out with these two beautiful wallaroos. Now, you'd be forgiven when you hear the name for thinking that a wallaroo is, is a, some crazy hybrid between a kangaroo and a wallaby. And these two species don't hybridise. Wallaroos are a species all of their own. However, the name does show you a little bit about what they are and where they fit in to the macropod family. So with big male wallaroos growing to about 58 kilograms, they're bigger than most of the wallaby species you're going to find in Australia. However, when you compare them to something like big red kangaroos, they're certainly not kangaroo sized. So while they're in a family of their own, size wise, they are a pretty good middle ground. Now, there's actually three species of wallaroos. There's also three species of kangaroos here in Australia. And these guys here, are all called the common wallaroo, or a uh, euro, as a lot of people know them. Within that species, there's several subspecies, which is why we see different colors amongst some of these guys. Browns for brown environments, silvers for silver environments, they blend in particularly well. When you fit these poor subspecies together, the common wallaroo is actually the most widespread macropod in all the country. Which when you think about it, considering kangaroos is what everybody knows as an Australian icon, these guys really should maybe take that place. They're found over all of Central Australia, all the way from the West Coast. And uh, in fact, the only place you don't find them is Victoria, where I'm from, and down in Tasmania. They have a massive distribution. Within that distribution, though, they're not generally found on huge, wide open plains, like you might see red kangaroos in, uh, in media or something like that. They're scattered throughout this range, and they generally prefer hilly and rocky areas. So they're sort of kangaroo-sized, kangaroo-shaped, and they have a, a lifestyle a little bit more like some of our wallabies. Also, just like wallabies, these guys are a little bit less social than our kangaroos. While they will live in groups, the groups aren't necessarily tied to each other in the same way that kangaroos are, where they maintain a strict hierarchy, they live together pretty well full time. These guys are basically coming together because the resources in the area allow them to be occupying the same area. So they're wallaby-like in behavior. On the other hand, they're actually very kangaroo-like in diet. These guys generally eat as much grass as they can. So they're a very good middle ground between a kangaroo and a wallaby. So the name isn't entirely misleading at all. Living in the environment that these guys come from, they've got to be incredibly water efficient. So they have particularly dry droppings. They have a concentrated urine with really efficient kidneys. And they've got to have a really efficient breeding system. So wallaroos, just like kangaroos and most of our wallabies, they practice what we call embryonic diapause. When they mate, the baby grows to about 100 cells and she can pause that joey. She'll have another joey in the pouch and she could even have another joey at foot. When you think of this, it sounds like they mass produce and there's going to be millions and millions of them. And there is actually about 4 million wallaroos in the country, but we're a very big country. The reason for this isn't necessarily so they are in plague proportions. It's because the environment in Australia is so harsh, the odds of losing joeys is pretty high. And if she only bred once a year and she lost that, it's going to be next year before she gets another crack. So by having this system where she's got a bit of a conveyor belt going, it means that let's say the joey at foot is taken by a dingo or a tail, or we run out of resources, there's not enough food and water for her to keep lactating and the pouch joey dies, she's got another one in reserve. During times of drought, they're not going to survive. So they do run on a boom or bust cycle. There's areas where they do very well and there's areas where they're really not doing very well. So it can be easy to look at them in one area and think that they're in plague proportions, but as a species wide, uh, we need to be a little bit cautious about making these assumptions by looking at one area. It's not necessarily an accurate way to do things. A great example of why we can't judge the whole species by the presence of one area is uh, when you break these down to a subspecies level. Well, I said before, there's about 4 million common wallaroos across the country. On Barrow Island, off the coast of Western Australia, one of their subspecies numbers only 1,800. Now, when you put that into perspective with some of our more famous endangered animals, there's 1,800 pandas. So we have a wallaroo subspecies that is just as endangered as a panda. Pandas receive millions and millions of dollars. And how many people are worried about the Barrow Island wallaroo? So it's a bit of a sad thing. The thing I think more than anything that we should take away is uh, while kangaroos and wallabies are, are what Australia is famed for, the wallaroo is just as equally Australian. It should have its place and it should be something that we're proud of as a nation that people from overseas want to come and visit and have a look at. They're an Australian icon and being over most of the country, they should be something that's common knowledge. Now, with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed our video and I hope you've learnt something today. And uh, if you haven't already, please check us out on Facebook, like us on, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you want to do us a favour, 
the facility we're at today is called Wildlife SA. Their wildlife care is based here on the east side of Adelaide, and they're looking after all these beautiful wallaroos and a bunch of other animals that we're filmed with. So if you can do us a favor, show us, uh, head on over and show them your support and tell them you're from Wicked Wildlife. The last thing, if you want to see us get out and about and visit more amazing facilities like this, check us out on Patreon. It's a contribution from our wonderful friends on Patreon that help us get out to places like this and show you these beautiful animals. So with that in mind, guys, thanks for listening. And as always, I will see you next week. Between now and then, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care. <music>